I'm Bob Rice, and in today's web series, we're going to talk about the controller objective. What is the goal of this PID loop, of this control loop, to maintain control? Why is it there? How should it respond? Before we can go and tune a loop or even approach it from a modeling and optimization standpoint, we have to define what we want it to do, right? And good control, well, it's simple, right? Good control is simple, right? And I'm writing it this way, obviously, because it's an acronym, not because I like to read things vertically, right? Good control is focused on safety, which is how well the system can behave to upset conditions, right? If control gets out of hand, are we spilling water on the floor are we, or are we releasing some sort of toxic emission into the air, which would be very bad, right? We need to make sure that the safety of the equipment, of the personnel, of the area and the environment are all taken into account, right? That is the very first thing when we're defining the control objective. What is the worst thing that can happen if the control fails, right? Then we have to take this control loop's impact into play. The individual islands of automation that you have in your plant, as far as related to the temperature and the flows and the pressure controls, they're all going to interact with each other. They're going to impact each other. So you need to understand where does this control loop fit in the big picture, right? When it responds too quickly, do other loops around it start to oscillate and become unstable as well, right? So you need to make sure that the impact is well understood. Unfortunately, I had to include the word management in here, mainly because I needed something to fit under the M, right? But there are goals of production, right? How do you get control, right? What is the goal? How do you want this controller to respond? How close to set point do you want, right? Management is going to dictate I need this flow to be within five gallons per minute or two gallons per minute or one gallon per minute. There are going to be certain constraints that are assigned and that's going to feed a lot of your control objective. Then probably the most important is profit. What are the economic factors associated with this loop, right? Where can you save money? Where can you make more money, right? If you can get closer temperature control with less variability, does that allow you to maybe move that set point up a little bit to be able to get additional um, optimization out of your system? Maybe you're using less cooling or maybe less heating or something like that, right? So the profit uh, factors associated with it. The next one is a little bit more confusing, but it's longevity. How often do you have to go back to this loop to retune it or make adjustments? If this is a loop that is constantly degrading in performance or changing, you may need, may, may need to take a step back and address the overall control narrative or control structure, right? If the dynamics are changing, you may have to apply things like adaptive control, right? The simpler you can keep the control strategy, the easier it is to document. But if you have a complicated process that's always changing, you may need to take a step back and make a more advanced narrative to be able to handle that. In one of our later video series, we will be talking about adaptive control and gain scheduling and other ways that you can take into account nonlinear behavior. Then, of course, uh, last but not least, is the equipment, right? The equipment is what is driving the process, right? Your sensors, your valves, your pumps, all that stuff costs money, typically a lot of money to maintain. So if you can maintain your equipment better with better tunings, better control objectives, that's going to allow that equipment to last longer. You don't want your steam valve moving up and down very, very rapidly. It's going to wear out much more quickly and it's going to fail prematurely. So when you're defining your control objective, you need to take into, a into account safety, impact, management, profit, longevity, and equipment. Right? Take all those things into account to help you define what is good control. Is it fast? Is it slow? How close to set point do you need to be? How much movement on the output? How quickly do you actually need to get there? Right? My philosophy behind controller tuning is every loop should be tuned as slow as the process conditions allow it to be to be able to improve the robustness and stability and long-term control of that loop. You want things to move nice and smooth whenever possible. 
There are always exceptions to the rule where some things may need to move very, very fast and sometimes in filling applications or in steam drum, boiler drum type applications. Those are going to require very fast control, but that is dictated by the control objective that you've outlined, not just because you want it to track set point well. You need to have your, your objectives grounded in reason. This is a difficult part of designing the controller. You have to sit down and define what these, these characteristics are and how you're going to achieve them. But on the other side, if you do this, after you're done tuning, you'll have an objective that you've now satisfied. You said, I needed to get this type of control with this type of response, and you've gotten there. Now you've got the documentation on how to get there. So before you go out and tune your loops, sit down and try to understand the objective. What does tuning it do to make the process better? Does it do anything, right? So make sure you take those into account. Thank you for joining me today. We talked a little bit about the control objective and what are the different factors that you have to take into account to define whether or not you want slow or fast control. Thank you.